Hello guys, it's Mary Beth Shaw at Stencil Girl Products. So, I hope everybody has had a lovely day today. I'm going to make some washi tape. You can make this with um, this tape and this one I have over here. These are Dina Wakely um, tapes made by Ranger. But you can also get that medical tape that will kind of simulate Ranger. washi tape. Hey, so please. here's what it looks like when you take it, when you undo it. It looks just like a white washi tape, huh? Okay, so there's different widths of these tapes. I am putting them on a Ziploc bag because this will allow me to, um, I can just store them like this because that's the only thing. I mean, they're tape. You need to put them somewhere, right? So I just have them right here on a Ziploc bag. And, um, if you have ink pads, that's the best way to get going on them is with some ink pads. Because um, especially if you have some permanent and quick drying ink pads, which I don't really happen to have, so that's kind of sucks. You know what, I do have one, I just remembered it. I'm gonna grab it real quick. Um, I have this eye zinc. Oh, you know what, it's a dye pad. I don't think that's permanent. Well, we'll see. Okay, so you can just start out with some color. You can do this with paint, you can do it with ink, you can do it with markers. You can do it with distress oxide. Here's the thing, distress oxide, you know, normally you water activate it, but you don't have to. You can just leave it, as use it as a regular ink pad, right? I mean, you don't have to water activate it to get that oxidation effect. Um, so anyway, I just thought I'd put a few random colors down here to get it started. And whoop, come back. These are I the paper artsy. Here's mahogany. I'm going to use some green olive. What I do when I'm doing these is I um, try to get some colors going and then I let it dry down and I'll go back and kind of doodle or embellish them later but I don't necessarily do that right off the bat. So I've got a variety pack of stencils here to use. And what I do is I start with the ones first that have the most wide open spaces. Like this one has bigger holes than this one, okay? Okay, so, so I start with the biggest openings, the biggest hole openings like this one. And I've tried to pick some coordinating colors. I'm gonna make these all the same. You know, I could do them all different, but I just kind of playfully move them around the page, right? And that's looking pretty good, eh? Now, you can just take your sponge and add some big color blotches because I like to have some real big color on these too. Probably and I love having tape that coordinates with color palettes that I like. I think that that's um, really fun, you know? So I hope you guys like it too. I do think it's pretty fun. All right, let's get a taupe in here, more of a neutral. That might be good, huh? And maybe, uh, notice I'm not even cleaning my sponge in between either. I'm gonna, um, I'll just keep this one in the neutral. And then maybe a little bit of neutral here and there, but I'm gonna try to vary them up a little bit, see if I can do that. I've got some black. I'm gonna probably use a little bit of black at the end and a little bit of a light. I'm not gonna use white, but I'm gonna use this buff. Okay, so stencils that are great for doing this kind of stuff, like these Ann Butler ones, this L691. It's, even though they're circular, you know, who cares? They. Um, they're gonna be fantastic for this kind of detail because they're somewhat small scale and you can just use them all over, randomly move them. Also, our ATC stencils are really good for this sort of thing. Um, boy, I'm loving this mahogany. Isn't this one of Seth's colors? I'm not positive, but boy, it's sure one of my faves, I'll have to say, from Paper Artsy. Um, Here's some more. I think these are also Anne's, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this is Ann Butler 692, L692. 
Let's get a little bit. Oh, let's use some triangles. Yeah. Right? Okay. Got a lot of movement going on here, which I love. And I think I'm going to go back in and um, put some of this green these are this is called green olives this one is this paper artsy it's also a wonderful color i think this is a pretty palette mahogany ah that was genius look at that genius mahogany green olives and tango it's a pretty palette look at those three colors nice okay so i wanted to get some of that green because i just was going to make some more dabs of um a darker color on here it's fall isn't it these are fall colors it's probably it's my favorite time of the year the fall is I love the um the fall colors generally so let's see here Ooh, what about a few stars that might be nice you know I think I'm gonna pick up the stars in this lighter color That looks nice. And you just get little bits. You don't even get the full star every time. And that's okay. I, I like that. You get a little bit of a um, little suggestion of the star sometimes. Maybe that's all you need, right? And I've got these jammed up next to each other too. So sometimes the, um, the design might be going across two tapes. I'm not paying any attention to that, okay? Um, and let's see about doing something really little. This is part of Ray, Missick, Ray Missickman's um, repetition stunts. I love color. I studied it for a long time before I felt confident with it. I, um, you know, if you're ever feeling not confident with color, the easiest way to always get a good result is to just pick the colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. You know, blue and green, blue and green, purple, blue, purple, blue and green, that kind of thing is what I'm thinking about. All right, so let's take a look at what we got. Ooh, that's kind of noisy, huh? I'm gonna pull one of these out and take a look at it. And look at how pretty this is, right? I mean, we don't have anything on this. People who manufacture washi tape don't have anything on us, do they? I mean, these are just lovely. <laughs> oh, and it's so much fun to peel them off. Now, if you want to, when you're saving these, you know, you could, um, we've used these chalky, these fresco finish paints. So you can go back in and embellish these with pencils or markers or any kind of thing that you want to use on them. Let's see how this, yeah, this pencil works because it's this kind of, um, I don't know what this stuff is made out of, these tapes, but it's not slick. It'll just take any kind of embellishment so you can get a lot of um, really easy results. If you just keep doodling on it, you get your Signo pen and your black pen. And I would just keep them stored on a little Ziploc page like this. And yes. you can even go back and put your fingerprint in. I love doing that. And getting, um, I like this when you can leave a little bit of more of a raised painterly look. And then that way, you know, it it definitely does not look manufactured when you use it in your work, when you've got like this painterly effect on it. So I hope you enjoyed this. Go get some cheap tape, some um, fake washi tape and paint on it and make some pretty little washies for your own work. I will be back.